Hey everyone, this is Tara Lynn from Paint, Rinse, Repeat. Welcome. Uh, today we are doing Night Owl, which is a fun watercolor painting. I'm just going to get my camera figured out here. Let me get this nice and close so you can see everything that's going on. All right. So before we get started, um, what you're going to need for watercolor today is watercolor paper. So if um, you don't have watercolor paper, your painting is not going to work out the way you want it to. Um, watercolor paper is what makes all the magic happen. Okay, um, I am going to take this off just so you can see my edges clearly do not feel like you have to do this at home. Um, so watercolor paper, I recommend Canson XL. It is my favorite. Um, you are going to need some acrylic paint or Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White is also an excellent alternative if you're um, wanting uh, to make a nice, clean, crisp white. Uh, watercolor always reactivates and so finding ways to make and keep white is uh, sometimes a challenge. So I recommend uh, white acrylic paint. As far as watercolor goes, today we are using one color and that is going to be black. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my black out and I'm just using um, this set of watercolors is Prima Marketing um, from Art Philosophy. You can get it at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, um, or online. Um, but any black watercolor is all you need as far as colors go today, okay? Um, you could also, if you were feeling, um, you know, willing to experiment, you could certainly do this with an all blue palette or an all purple palette. Um, you do not have to use the same color that I am using. So feel free to shake it up and make it your own. There are new rules in art. Um, and then of course you're going to need water because uh, we're using watercolor, paper towels, um, a paint palette or a plate to put your paint on. Um, today I'm going to use these weld palettes. Um, it's just going to make it a little easier for me to um, create the um, tones and shades of black that I need. Um, a, heat gutter, a heat gun or hair dryer is optional, but it speeds along the process. Um, and then of course you need to be able to transfer the owl onto your paper. So um, the transfer was available as a download. Um, so feel free to print that off or um, if you are good at drawing, you can go ahead and draw that onto your watercolor paper. If you do not have that transferred, now's a good time to pause the video, get that transferred and then start the video back up. Um, also, I will mention, uh, since I'm using YouTube, you can pause, rewind, um, and work on things at your own pace if I'm going too fast for you. So please don't ever feel like you have to rush along if, um, if you work at a different speed than I do, okay? Um, I also will mention um, bad planning on my part. So um, today we actually have a parade that's going right in front of my studio. So I will try to keep the noise to a minimum. Um, but you might notice a little chatter and um, stuff like that. So anyway, um, what I'm gonna do now um, is mix up some uh, black paint here. We need black watercolor today. And so the first thing that I'm gonna do and the way that I like to mix um, my watercolors, I'm gonna create four similar pigments and then I'm gonna add more water to thin some out. Um, that way we get uh, some different shades. And I will show you right here on my paper towel 
what I'm doing. So I'm just going to get this started. All right. All right. So this is going to be my darkest tone here. And I want this to be pretty much black. Okay. Then I'm going to add a little water to this one. And the thinner that we make our watercolor, the thinner the pigment is going to be. So then of course for this one, I'm going to add even more water. And even make that thinner. And then of course in the last one, I want the most amount of water because that is going to be our lightest pigment. And then of course, if we need the darkest of the dark, we can pull some right from um, the bottle or the tube, uh, whichever set of watercolors you're using. All right, so if I did this right, I should have four different shades. So here's number one. Here's number two, there's number three, and there's number four. Um, so I might add just a pinch in here. All right, there we go. There's our four colors. So um, darkest, I've got two kind of medium shades and then one that's really light. Um, so unlike acrylic, when we work with watercolor, we are going to work uh, lightest to darkest. Um, so I'm going to dip in my lightest color and we are going to, and I'm just using kind of a medium sized round. So this is a number eight and I am going to add some shading. Oop, here comes the band right here on the wing. This should be passed in just a moment. I am so sorry, guys. <laughs> so right here on the top of the wing, and I'm using my lightest color. We're going light to dark today. Okay, so right here on my wing, the tops of my wing, we are going to add some down here in the belly. Right now I'm just kind of being very loose with it. I'm going to add a little bit around the mask on the face here. A little bit on the cheeks. I'm going to darken these eyes. Now I'm moving fast. I'm moving fast intentionally. Okay. This is not a hyper realistic painting. We are just going to give the impression of an owl here. Okay. We are going to um, add some shadows. So what I'm going to do here on the tracer, we've got lines for the wings right below that line is where I'm going to add my shadow. And then as we deepen and darken, it's going to be more apparent. So below each line, that's where I'm adding my shadow color. So below each line, here we go. All 
All right. So right now he looks a little bit like a clown. That's all right. We're gonna give him a little grace. Um, we've got our lightest tone. I'm gonna dip into the water. I'm just gonna blend this out pretty much all over my owl, okay? Um, some of it's gonna lift and move. Some of it's gonna stay put. Right now I'm only dipping into the water, okay? And that is because most of this uh, owl, we don't want to be pure white. We want it to have a little bit of that gray tone. So I am wetting all of the wings. I'm gonna let that shadow we just did blend out slightly. So it still keeps the color where we placed it, but it is gonna blend out a little bit as well. So it's just going to add a little bit of the tiniest bit of pigment in those areas that are the lightest, okay? And I'm not worried about the background at all. Most of the background we are doing with the solid black. All right, so what we did was added our lightest pigment and then we blended that out. I'm gonna give this just a moment to kind of dry on its own and then we are gonna go up to our next darkest color. So I want to make sure that, that nothing is pooling when I move on to the next step. So if you've got any pools of water, definitely just blend that out. We want this to, we don't want it to be completely dry, but we do want this to start absorbing. We don't want any pools of water sitting on our owl. So that was our lightest shade. I'm going to move up to the next tone, which is just a pinch darker. And as we layer this as well, it's going to get darker. So if I continue to use the same color, that would even darken it just a little bit. But I'm going to move up one, okay? And underneath, you've got a line uh, on the wing. On the underside of that line, I'm going to add this next darkest tone here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Continuing with that same color, um, so not the lightest, but the next one there. Uh, I am going to again come around the mask of the owl.
And then I am going to go one more time right underneath the line of that wing. Right now my paper is wet, so this is going to blend out. That's okay. So I'm going below the line on each wing. then we're going to add a little more shadowing on the chest of the owl and so I want I'm going to start using vertical strokes and I'm just going to create just some lines in here just kind of mimicking texture And then again, I'm going to add a little bit on his cheeks. Again, I'm going to kind of just tap it in or create lines. I want a little bit of texture on this cheek. this same color and I'm going to darken the eyes and I'm also going to pull this mask down his nose here so this second step with the second color was very similar to the first however we are not going to pull this out uh, to blend it at all. We're going to let it sit as is. Um, again, I'm going to pause for just a second. Um, I'm going to give you a few seconds to catch up if you need to, but I'm going to allow mine to dry slightly as well. our lightest light. We've moved on to the second color there. I'm going to go down a size in my brush. So I was using kind of a medium to large um, brush. I'm going to go down a size and I'm going to use kind of a medium to small. It doesn't need to be a fine line, um, but I do need it to start being a little more refined. All right, so was my darkest, right? I lost my my color tones. Yeah. All right. So not the darkest, but the next the next one here. So lightest, second lightest, and then third tone is what we're using. 
All right, so now I'm gonna come through and I'm going to add this color on the lines, on right on my tracer lines. And this is really gonna to start to define this shape. Some of this might blend out if I've got uh, some wetness. I'm gonna embrace that. I am a very uh, kind of free artist, whatever my materials like to do, I really like to embrace that. Um, watercolor, a lot of times, um, likes to do its own thing. Notice, I, as we moved on to this step here, I did let it dry naturally. And the reason why I did that is because I do want there to be just, you know, a, a marginal amount, a tiny little amount of wetness in the paper. That does allow a little movement and a little blending, um, although it's not quite as noticeable since we gave it a few moments to dry. Um, but we are still working uh, on somewhat wet paper. So I am just going to start by following these lines of the wings. help give us a little definition and as we're working here it's really not going to come together until we do this background you will be surprised at how much of this owl uh, is conditional on this black background On to the next step, I am going to add just a little bit of texture. Okay, first, I'm going to go over the lines here in the face. So I'm going to go over that the line kind of down his beak there, the line above his eye, below, right down the center of the mask. on his beak. All right, we are gonna continue using the same color, but now I want to work on dry paper, completely dry. So I'm gonna grab my handy dandy dryer here. I'm gonna mute, but I'm gonna take a moment to dry this. If you don't have a way to dry it quickly, just pause for five minutes, 
come back in five minutes and then we'll go from there. Um, but I am going to dry this. All right, so mine's pretty dry. I'm gonna move on to the next step. Um, same color. Um, so in order of dark to light, I've got one, two, three, four. So this is my darkest. I'm gonna go one shade lighter than my darkest color. Um, and with this, I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush. I'm gonna start adding just a little bit of texture. And so what I wanna do is here um, on the line of the wing, I'm going to make some vertical lines, different sizes. I'm going to try not to um, make them too evenly space. And I'm going to add about three rows of lines. Again, not perfect. We want them to kind of be different sizes, different lengths. So I'm going to do the same over here. My first row happens right at that line of the wing. Next, we're going to take this color and we are going to add some of that same texture, some lines. I keep my lines vertical. I'm going to go up here around the mask. Just following the shape of that mask. going to add a little bit right under his chin so I'm not going to go as wide as I did with these original feathers and that's because the darker shadows are going to be mostly under his chest here.
And then I'm going to add just a little bit of texturing, a little bit of these vertical strokes kind of around the side of his nose here. Don't have to add too many, but just a little. And then um, it's up to you, but if you want to come through and just add another little bit of dark um, shadow under parts of these wings, I wouldn't do the whole wing like we were doing previously when it was a little bit wet. I would add kind of just a little touch on each one. All right, I am pretty happy with how he is right now. Um, we need to add some black to our background. So I'm gonna black out the entire background with the exception of that moon. We need to keep that light. Um, and so, um, let's see. I'm gonna nice fix that brush. Um, and we want this to be pretty black, okay? We want this to be the darkest color. So I'm going to pull this all over my background. And the water is going to stay where there's wetness, or the pigment is going to stay where there's wetness. So since we, most of that outer wing is dry, if you stop right there where that line is, it is not going to blend as long as that's dry. Now I want this to be nice and dark. So as my black dries, it's gonna lighten just a little bit. I wanna make sure I've got a lot of pigment on there. So I might even go over this twice. just to ensure that my background is nice and deep dark black. Because honestly, it should be dark enough that I'm not gonna be able to see my brush strokes. Um, right now I can see my brush strokes. That tells me it's not anywhere near dark enough. So I'm gonna need two lighters. And there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes that's just the difference between um, brands of watercolor, or maybe it was the difference in how I mixed it. So sometimes it just works out like that. This is definitely darker down here. Much more pigment. I'm gonna go almost up to these wings with my large brush. I'm, I definitely need a nice, tiny round brush to get in those little nooks and crannies. I'm 
you will see once we get this background completely black how different the owl looks um, blackness of this background really makes a big difference Add some color on this, some I could say color, there's really no color, it's all black, but I'm gonna add some of that black over here as well. To get this nice and dark. I'm going to mix up a little more of this blackest black watercolor. I'm going to add another layer. Up top. try the best I can to keep my brush strokes in the same direction so that if you do end up seeing some of these brush strokes although I don't want to but if you end up seeing some of them you at least are not distracted and black, black sky for our night owl. Before we move on to the next step, make sure that the edges of your wings are nice and crisp.
just don't feel like this top section is quite as dark as the bottom. So I'm gonna do one more coat up here of the pigment. You may not need to do that. And I am probably overthinking. pretty happy with this. I feel like when this dries, it's all going to be kind of a consistent uh, black color. And that is what I want. So that really makes a big difference in our owl. Alright, I'm going to continue working with my darkest black. If you are all out of that dark black pigment, go ahead and grab some more or make some more. Now these colors should be, or this tone should be the darkest that you've got. We don't want anything darker than this. Um, I'm going to use a nice small brush and I'm going to start adding just a little bit of detail in the face. So I want to uh, blacken the inside of the eye. Also want to add just a little more of my darkest color in all the shadow areas, which would mean right underneath the chin. Maybe right down here where the feathers go underneath. Those are our darkest areas. Over here, there would be a little bit of a shadow again where the, the wing kind of tucks under. I'm going to add a few marks in the mask. Now, we don't want to do the same, do, um, the same process we did earlier. We're not adding this dark color everywhere. We're just adding a, a few little dark feathers here and there, a few little shadowing. Um, marks underneath. We're just adding shadow variation. Same thing above his eye. I'm going to add just a little bit of featheriness on his eyebrows and around his nose. his cheeks just a little and if you want to accent some of the lines you can absolutely add just a little bit of this darkest color This wing area should be nice and dry, so this should not spread. We're starting to just define this a little bit. All 
right, once again, I'm going to hit this with my dryer just to make sure the background is dry. And we're going to add in some of the clouds. <laughs> Remember how I said we're going to leave uh, the moon bright white? Well, that's what I didn't do. I did not leave that bright white. So before I move on to my clouds, um, I am going to clean that up just that. Uh, make it look like a moon. But that is a great example of how sometimes you just got to work with what you've done artists make mistakes. So I'm going to add, I'm going to have to layer this because as you might see, it's pulling up some of that watercolor background. And I don't want that for my moon. Um, all right, so pretend that's white. We're going to work, <laughs> we're going to move forward. Um, what I'm going to do uh, for this one um, is I'm going to grab um, you can use a round brush or you can use a flat brush. Um, but we're not going to use a lot of, so I've got a round brush here. We're not going to use a lot of paint actually. So I'm just going to get kind of a, a dot or two of paint in my little paint well here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush in there and then I'm going to do what they call offloading. So I'm going to wipe a lot of this off and I'm going to start planning where I want my clouds. Now the easiest place to add some of those clouds is down here. And I've got very, very little paint on here. And I'm just tapping it. So what's going to happen is, since there's very little paint on the brush, it's just going to give a little, a little bit of clouds. And we're going to build these up. So this is kind of the first step, and this brush, for whatever reason, has some green on it, so I'm going to clean that off. Apparently the last time I painted, I didn't clean that up. All right. I should just switch brushes. That is not working. All right. So again, dip into the paint, offload it. That means just wipe it away. And then we're going to start tapping where we want the clouds. And so I'm just going to start building this up, following this process. And so we kind of want our clouds. Down here, it's easy. I'm just going to add some in the corner. Um, but up here, we just want to kind of create a pattern that kind of follows around the moon. We want to leave that moon peeking out behind these clouds. This is the planning process, okay? We're not um, by any means finished with these clouds. And I just kind of want to plan out where everything's going to go. All right, with the same brush, I'm gonna tap into a little more white, again, offloading it. And I'm gonna just start with my cloud pattern and bring it down. It takes very little paint and I'm just kind of tapping it, making those 
clouds a little bit wider. And as long as this acrylic paint is wet, it's going to pull up some of that black watercolor. And it's going to tone down some of this, which is what we want. Up here on the opposite side of that moon, our cloud's going to go upwards, where all the other ones go downwards. And don't forget about this one down here at the bottom. I'm always kind of starting um, in the brightest area as I tap this in and then pull it downward. Then adding a little bit of that lightness and then pulling it downward. Lots of tapping, lots of smushing these bristles. With hardly any on my brush, I'm just going to add a little bit around the clouds. Little hints of white here and there. And I really like to do this with, with barely anything on this brush. Okay. Every time I dip into my paint, I offload. I have my clouds pretty much planned out and I like the arrangement. What I'm gonna go do now is dip in a white, offload, and then I'm really gonna brighten up some of these tips of the clouds. I want that to be my brightest area. So always offloading. We're gonna come back in here. Just tap in some more lightness. I want the brightness of those clouds to really pop through. This is just a process of building up those clouds and they're going to be brightest where they face the moon. By building it up here, you can kind of play with the shapes a little bit. I'm just going to repeat this process again. Just adding a few different layers, a few different touches. Each time we come through, it just changes the shape of the clouds just a little bit. All right, I'm going to let most of that dry. Now remember, this was supposed to be solid white up here. This was supposed to be a clean slate for me to work on. But I had to fix my little error. All right, so I'm going to dry that part. You probably do not have to dry as you probably follow directions. I did not follow my directions. All right, I'm gonna 
get a nice small brush. Um, I'm going to dip into some of my black paint. It doesn't need to be the darkest. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of variation and texture in this moon. I don't want it to be completely white. My process could be a little different from your process since my moon was not completely white to begin with, which was totally on me. The next thing you're going to want to do uh, with your white acrylic paint, um, and you're going to use a nice tiny, tiny brush and add a few stars in there. Right, this is a night sky, so tap in. Also, I'm going to add on just a few parts, just a little highlight. So up here at the top of the wing, I'm going to add in just a little white highlight. In the eye, we need to add just a dot in each eye. And then maybe at the bottom, just a little glistening. Anywhere you want highlight, you can add some of this white. This is our lightest color. So you can add this anywhere you think you need a little highlight. bit on the feathers. It's totally up to you. Remember, as you add this white, if you're highlighting above or on top of any of this uh, watercolor, it is going to lighten um, the area. It's going to add a highlight, but it's also going to pick up some of that color underneath. So um, if you're adding it over the blackest of the blacks, you may not get a pure white. From here on out, it's pretty much finishing touches. So you can look at your colors, you can look at your owl, and you can, oops, I don't think this is supposed to happen. Silly brush. Um, you can decide what you need to, um, you know, make your owl the way that you like it. So you can, you know, kind of go come in with some of this lighter color if you need to, um, and it darkens some areas. If you want to move some of your watercolor, you can re-wet the watercolor and it will blend. So from here on out, you can just kind of play with it and make it your own. This is yours. Um, this is your owl and every owl, you know, their feathers are going to be a little different. Um, the shadows are going to be a little different. So feel free to play with it. Have fun. A lot of the work in here is in the background. The owl itself is just really kind of adding some shadows along these tracer lines. So I'm just gonna maybe add in a little more variation of color in here. For the most part, I am pretty happy with this guy. 
So I'm going to take a moment to dry him or let him dry and I am about finished. So um, I want to thank you for joining me. Um, again, uh, apologies for the parade. That was just really um, not what I was going for. Um, as, as far as my nice, quiet painting environment. <laughs> um, but I would like to invite you to share your finished piece with us um, in our Facebook group. It is free. You can join at facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat. Um, and I would love to see your owl. I would love to cheer you on. Um, the address is there on the screen if you would like to type it in. Um, another option for you, you can tag me at Paint, Rinse, Repeat on Facebook and Instagram or hashtag Paint, Rinse, Repeat um, on Facebook or Instagram. And I will see your owl and I will cheer you on and I will love it. Um, if you have any questions at all, you can always email me. <clears throat> Excuse me. My email address is Tara at Paint, Rinse, Repeat .com. Um, and I would love to see you in an upcoming class. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to my supporters. So supporters at each and every class that I offer for only $9.99 a month. And, um, it is a great value. Um, it's just about the cost of a single class. And so for, um, that same price, you can sign up to be a supporter and you can get everything each and every month you can participate with us. Um, and we always have a, a special supporter bonus. So I would love for you to consider that. Do not forget to share your work with us. I can't wait to see it. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you next time, everybody. Have a great evening.